Most people think that they want to retire as a millionaire, but now the information is coming out. If you have a million dollars when you retire, you're broke. You literally can't survive. What do I mean? Experts are saying that you should plan on only accessing 3.3% of your retirement nest egg rather than the traditional 4%. But wait, what in the world does that mean? If you retire with a million dollars, that leaves you with less than $2,800 a month to spend. That's right. If you get to retirement age, you have a million dollars in your account. According to their estimates, that would only leave you about $2,800 a month to actually live on. The average age of retirement is 62. And so when do people plan on retiring? Well, if you are between the ages of 25 and 40, you plan to retire at an average age of 59. You're very optimistic. I'm going to be rich and I'm going to retire before I'm 60. If you are between 41 and 56, you say, ah, it might take me an extra year or so. I'm going to retire at 60. But if you are between the ages of 57 to 75, you plan to retire at an average age of 68. Literally, you are right there and you know you're not going to make it to retirement by 60. The median retirement savings by age, according to the Transamerica Center for Retirement Studies, is in their 20s. You only have $16,000. In your 30s, you have $45,000. If you're in your 40s, you have $63,000 in retirement savings. If you're in your 50s, you have $117,000. And unfortunately, the average or the median retirement savings for people in their 60s is $172,000. Now go back and remember, if you have a million dollars, you get to spend $2,800 per month, according to the expert estimations. But if you only have about 20% of that, guess what, my friends? That means that you get approximately five to $600 per month to spend. If you only have $172,000 in your retirement savings in your 60s, that's just about $500 to $600 per month that you have to spend. So how much do I need to save for retirement? Well, according to the Federal Reserve SCF data, if you are 18 to 24, you should be putting $4,745 away for retirement. And if you get into your 40s, now you need 100 grand. If you're in 65 to 69, they're saying that you only need somewhere in the 200,000. So ages 55 to 69, the Federal Reserve SCF data, 223,000 to $200,000 is what they suggest. Now, of course, as we just talked about, that doesn't leave you nearly a lot of money to actually spend on a monthly basis. And so if you have a million dollars at retirement, this means an individual would have $583 less a month to spend while retired. What do we mean? Well, they used to tell you that if you have a million dollars saved, you should spend 4% a month of your money. So million dollars, you withdraw 4%, your monthly income is $3,333, and your annual income is $40,000. That is how they used to think about it. But now, all of a sudden, they said maybe you shouldn't actually withdraw 4%, and they dropped it to 3.3%. So your million dollars, 3.3% spent per month means that your monthly income is actually only $2,700, and your annual income is $33,000. Now, for those of you that are sitting at home, most of you are probably not excited about retiring on $33,000 a year or $40,000 a year. And so if you just back into the math, you're going to need more than a million dollars in your retirement savings when you go to retire. That means if you're young, get to work. That means if you're older, you either have to take risk or you have to figure out passive income to go ahead and supplement your retirement savings. Those are the only two paths to actually having a material amount of monthly income to live on. Now, of course, people have been doing this for decades. You can do it on these smaller amounts of money. But I think most people, they aspire, whether they get there or not, to be able to actually do it with larger sums of money. And so if you want more than $40,000 a year to live off of in retirement, then you're going to need more than a, a million dollars in that retirement savings. And so ultimately, I think that there's a lot of people with big dreams, but they're not necessarily doing the work to get there today. John, when you see these numbers, is this just an indication that most people are significantly behind where they're going to have to be at retirement? Or is this something that is just, uh, it sounds good to talk about having a million dollars in retirement savings, but ultimately uh, this is just math and you can switch these numbers in and out and the analysis doesn't matter. Uh, really, it's concerning to me that 
an American has one hundred seventy two thousand uh, dollars for retirement when they retire in their 60s, when the average retirement is 62. It is very concerning that people are not set up financially to be able to retire. And it also speaks to kind of the, the debasement and the value of the U.S. dollar and how basic a million dollars really isn't what it used to be. And people used to aspire to have that. And now it's almost like a baseline that you need to have that at a certain point in life just to be able to, be able to retire comfortably. Well, the interesting part too is when you look at the data, not only uh, does a million dollars not get you what it used to based on inflation and all these other things, but the the average person thinks they're going to retire sooner, right? So when you look at uh, what we have here, the baby boomers said that they want to retire at an average age of 68. Generation X was age 60 they want to retire and Generation Y was 59. And I'm sure Generation Z is even lower and all that, <laughs> right? So like when you really start to think about it, people are opting for uh, more time, more freedom, more uh, qu a higher quality of life and they want to retire earlier than previous generations had thought was possible. Mix that with the with the inability to do that with the amount of capital that they're currently saving, and you're going to need a higher amount and all this stuff, and it makes it even worse. So I think that people are in for a real wake-up call when it comes to the amount of money that's actually needed for retirement. And maybe that number trends up, right? Maybe when you're 25 years old, you say, hey, I'm going to retire at age 50. And then you realize when you get older, maybe I don't have enough money, maybe at 60, and maybe it keeps going up or whatever. But ultimately, I think people would be shocked to know how much you actually need based on kind of when you plan on retiring, how much you spend per month, and then you don't have the ability to fluctuate off of that if you don't have additional income or investments that are producing cash flow off of that. So I think that it's a, uh, a fair point to look at and a fair point to, for people to be concerned about. But ultimately, it all depends on personal circumstances and what you plan on doing in retirement, if you plan on earning income still, what age you plan to retire at, if you have investments and all these other things. Uh, but yeah, ultimately, I, I, I think it's probably a little bit concerning that a million dollars does not get, get, it, get you what it used to when it comes to retirement. The other piece of the retirement game that seems to always go uh, completely undiscussed is when you have the um, when you have like the withdrawal, right? Obviously, you're going to have to be able to outpace that withdrawal uh, on a uh, on an annual basis. But the second thing is that it doesn't have to just be what are my retirement savings and oh, let me you know hope that the government ends up paying me some money. Instead, what ends up happening, I think, is that if you're really smart, you also are gonna end up with passive income as well, whether that is uh, interest-bearing accounts or real estate or, or something like that. So if you're a young person, that's really what you have to focus on is you've gotta focus on how the hell can we go ahead and get some sort of passive income so that I can live off that uh, forever. And one of the things that uh, I always tell young people is a, a really important thing in their financial journey is figure out what your monthly expenses are. So let's just say, I'll pick an easy number. Let's say you spend $3,000 a month. That's between rent, food, expenses, the whole nine yards. Spend $3,000, set a goal for three times that, nine to $10,000, right? And pick that number and say, can I get to the point where I am earning nine to $10,000 a month in passive income, whether that is from real estate, interest bearing accounts or, or whatever. And most people won't get there, but guess what? If you get to five or $6,000 early on, well, that covers your monthly expenses. And now if you keep your job, then you basically take that income and that ends up being uh, kind of supplemental, right? A lot of like professional athletes, they started to figure out, wait a second, I'm not gonna touch my uh, contract. So I get paid, you know, $5 million a year from the team. And I also have a bunch of marketing deals. I'm going to live off the marketing money. I'm never going to touch the uh, actual uh, contract money. And so same thing here is if you could get to the point where your passive income, you say, hey, I'm going to live off my passive income. I'm not going to touch the money I make at work or vice versa. And that's ultimately where people start to really get to kind of like true financial freedom is when they have the passive income that is able to eclipse what their monthly expenses are. In some cases, they even get it to the where it actually eclipses what they make at work. Absolutely. You made a great point about setting your goals so high that even if you fail, you're still higher than you would be originally. So if you set a goal of $10,000 a month in passive income and you only get to 50% of that or $5,000 a month, you still have that $5,000 a month in passive income, which I think is key for a lot of people. So set your goals high.